So let's say first you create an object that consists in, in three new space. Now it didn't fill us up. So in the first scavenge, it goes to one of somebody's spaces. You know, he scavenge, scavenge, scavenge. And eventually it gets tenure. Now, how to get rid of garbage there, in old space, there's another garbage collector, <coughs> uh, the, the GC, and, and it's a Mark Street collector, and there's two varieties, an incremental one and a stop the world one. And they serve different purposes. Now, let's say that this is still one of these objects that you know will become Professor Emeritus, or Object Emeritus, shall we say. So how do you push it into perm space? Well, there's a special save operation that takes whatever is in old space and says, well, okay, from now on, all of that gets tenured into perm space, so you uh, perm save. But, well, how do you, if, if you go here, how do you get rid of it when it becomes garbage? Well, for that, there's the global garbage collect that does go through perm space as well, and that's how you, uh, well, get rid of such garbage. So up to here, okay, more or less what was the structure of objects and, and the spaces and all that. Great. Yes. Now, so let, let's, let's see here. So we have objects all over here. And right now, we start, you know, allocating even and we allocate, 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 we need to scavenge that. Now, what is garbage there is any object that is not referenced eventually from something here. Right? Because, for, for instance, if I say string new, it goes into Eden, but the class string is going to be here or, or here or some such. Well, I don't know. Yeah, that's not a good example. So let's say that you make an array. And, uh, and the array is here, and you like array new one. And then you do object new and array at new at one put the object. So the object is over there and it's new, but the array is here and it's old. So whether that object is garbage up there or not depends on who is referencing it from here and here. Now these spaces are much bigger than new space. And it would be inconvenient every time you run out of space in, in, in new space to have to scan all of this just to find the few little objects here and there that point to something in new space. So for that, there is a remember table. This is a table that is of objects that are uh, that is maintained with objects in old or burn that have references to objects in new space. So whenever you want to see what's garbage in new space, you just go through this, mark everything that is new that you can see from here, and the rest is garbage. So you can throw it out. Now, eventually you're going to have to GC old space too, right? Because eventually there's enough garbage here that it merits to garbage collect. But then you have the same problem. Right? Because in order to determine what's garbage here, first you have to look at here, and because you assume that this is never garbage, right? First you need to scan all of this and see which objects in all space are referenced from somewhere in perm, and then those are your roots, and then you start scanning from there. But you have to scan all of that just to find the few objects that come to something in all space is time consuming, so there's also an old ring on the table. And this is both so that. The IGC and the GC find the roots faster. So far, so good. Good. So, putting all the responsibility of, of deciding when to garbage collect, when to run the incremental garbage collector, when to scavenge, and everything in the VM is a problem. Because if you do that, you can change GC. You know, the, the policy that I think is good for you is not good for him. Etc. Plus, it's more difficult in general to make it dynamic these days, at least. And so, there is a division of responsibilities in the short. First, we start here. And here's the thing if even starts filling up because you're allocating objects and allocating objects and not, I don't have space anymore, by that time it's too late for the image to intervene because I can't allocate anymore. Already, so if I go back to the image, well, I'm going to have to create more objects to determine and decide what to do, and maybe run the scavenger. And meanwhile, you have all the objects leaking into all space. So for that reason, we assume that the VM must always be able to allocate in new space, and therefore, the VM will always scavenge new space for us. That way, we don't need to be interrupted every, you know, 
few milliseconds or so, or you know, ten milliseconds or whatever it is, to uh, scavenge, which is something we had to do anyway. Now, of course, that means that since the VM is going to do it anyway, someone has to determine that this is always possible. That's where the image responsibility comes in. It's the image responsibility to make sure that the VM can always scavenge. And then, among other things, means that there has to be enough space, no space, to do that. But how will the image know? Because when, start, when space starts running low here, the virtual machine will signal a semaphore and say, okay, hey, now, someone should look into whether <laughs> something should be done uh, to make sure that the next scavenge will work. And because of that, <coughs> once the image gets notified, then the image can decide, hey, okay, so based on my application, I can you see, or I can throw memory, or I can throw away some cache and actually shrink memory. But because this is in the image, it can be tailored very easily and has direct access, access to all the objects you need to determine what to do. Consequently, here's the division of responsibility. The VM does very few things, very few, and always the same. Where the image has a memory policy class that is entrusted with managing this arrangement so that it always works according to what your application needs. Now, well, memory policy. Memory policy, what does that mean? The, the, the basic figure that the memory policy needs to calculate is what constitutes a memory emergency, some, some limit past which the VM might have a problem doing a scavenge. So that, well, the first thing you need to know is calculate how much memory will the worst case scavenge require. Well, first, we could say that Eden and one of those semi spaces are full. So we need to tell you everything. And so everything, everything in there will go to all space. So we need to accommodate that case. In addition to that, if we move some objects from Eden or, or new space into all space, Right? They may still have a reference to an object that is in new space. Therefore, they might have to go into the remember table. Because the remember table, remember, was the uh, set of objects in old space that might have references to uh, objects in new space. So the remember table may have to grow. So we need to calculate that too. And in addition to that, what happens if there's a perm space, key, a perm space object here that is referencing a new object, and now if we move the new object into old space, now we have a perm object referencing something in old space, and so the old remember table has to grow. So that means that we need space to make that grow as well. And in addition to that, this is the regular garden variety scavenge, the one that happens all the time. And in addition to that, well, um, when an actual garbage collection happens, with the GC or the incremental, well, not incremental. When a, when a GC happens, there's, you know, VisualWorks has a native stack, like, like Cog now and, and other VMs, I'm sure. So, there are references to objects in there, and so in order to make sure that we kill as much garbage as possible, we let them dump everything that is in the native stack space <coughs> into objects. So whatever was a reference, we make sure it goes away. But that also means that we make up to dump everything in stack space into first new space and then old space. So the NGC actually we need to make sure that there's a sensible amount of free memory to make sure that the scavenge can always succeed no matter what. Why is that important? Because what would happen if the VM decided, hey, whatever, I just grow anyway? Uh, well, if, if that happens, what happens when you have, say, an infinite recursion in a 64-bit image? It will grow boundless, it will quickly exhaust all the physical memory in the machine, and then the poor thing will start uh, paging a lot. And so it will be, it will potentially, you know, bring your machine down, basically. So there, it, it makes sense that there is a limit 
to the maximum amount of memory that you're going to allocate. If for some reason the image could not maintain this amount of memory free that you set for your application, then it's likely that you know you have a problem here. And better stop it now than you know 50 gigabytes of continued recursion later. Consequently, this amount is very important. This amount here to the to the image at least is very important because past past that you're risking that the VM decides, you know, I couldn't scavenge, sorry, I'm stopping now. Therefore, this is how it should look like. It looks very simple. So here your here's your image when you load it, right? And then the image grows, 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 grows. Past here, you start saying, you know, before you grow again, I'm going to GC. And then you get to the emergency threshold, which is this amount that we've been discussing. And past that, you should have the worst case coverage. Right? And here is the upper memory bound, the maximum limit, past which you say, you're not growing any more than this. So that's how it should look. Now, old space and, and perm space and all that is not just a single allocation. You can grow in chunks, and you can release memory in chunks. And so, really, it looks like this. So there's little pieces here, there's all space segments and all that. And so you grow in chunks, and you, know, you remove memory in chunks. That's how it should look like. But, <laughs> alas. It, it appeared, for a long time, it appeared to work. And, uh, and this is the kind of stuff that, that, that we found. Some, some things are you know, kind of little things. This is one of my, one of my favorite small things that, that we found. So there, there is code in the memory policy that controls whether the incremental garbage collector that uh, can run in, in phases while the universe is running will abort or not. And when it aborts, it means, you know, uh, I, I can't continue, so I'm going to undo what I was doing and I'm going to go to uh, some initial state. But the problem here, of course, is because there were symbols used, there was a typo, and of course, once you, once you had a, an HEC abort, you would never abort again. Uh, you just stay there until the HEC. Uh, so if you have code like this that uses symbols to communicate stuff, uh, don't. <laughs> Uh, that, that stayed there for, for, for a long time, um, unnoticed, but uh, that's no longer the case. Some other stuff, however, was a little bit more uh, more interesting. Well, first, we noticed that the, that the beginning of uh, the limit past which you need to GC before you grow is lower, but also these two things look very well. So let's take a look at the... the, the, uh, the Let's take a look at some of the things that were not that great. First, the IGC, so, so what happens when you get into an emergency situation? So you use memory, use memory, use memory, use memory, and you can't grow anymore because you are at the memory limit. So now you need IGC because if not, then you cannot maintain the invariant that the image will always be able to do scavenge. And at that point, the memory policy used to use the IEGC for that. The problem with the incremental garbage collector is that it is not guaranteed to collect all the garbage every single time. Not only because if you run it in interruptible mode, it does a little bit, and then your image does something that makes garbage, and then it continues running, but since it thought that this bit of garbage was not garbage, you know, it doesn't collect it. But also because its mark stack lives in the image. So if for any reason there's not enough space for the mark stack because you are in a memory emergency, then the IGC aborts and fails. And so the memory policy would go and say, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't get enough memory, so memory emergency. We bring up the process monitor that has all the processes with all your processes now stopped because there's an emergency. You run a GC and like you can mail it's a garbage go away. So not anymore. So th this would, could be a problem because you know, your application will stop working. Moreover, the calculation for what was the worst case coming and what was the emergency, emergency threshold was not always correct. So you could have a situation where, oh yeah, sure, I think the emergency threshold is just 100 kilobytes before the memory limit, while your scavenge may need a megabyte, and so you risk a VM crash, a controlled VM crash. 
because the VM assumes since you can't make me scavenge like this, there must be a problem. But that's not the case anymore. Moreover, when you start growing, it comes a point where your application is now hot. Let's say it has all the objects it needs to, to run. And past that, you start saying, you know, you're just accumulating garbage. Next time you grow, I'm going to need to pay and do, a, uh, and do a GC before you grow. But before, this limit was pretty low. And so you could get garbage collection for, 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 for nothing. <laughs> Moreover, the growth increments were really, really, really small. Really small. One megabyte. So each time you grow, I'm going to give you a megabyte, says the memory policy. Well, what's the problem with that? Well, the problem is, is like this, right? Let's say that here is the beginning of the memory, right? And over there is the, mem the memory bound. So you grow, you grow, you grow, you grow, you grow. Ah, from now on, I need to pay to grow, right? So I'm, I'm the smoker problem. Ah, I need to grow. Mm, I can't because there's not enough space. Uh, OK, give me more space. No, because the could be garbage. Oh, OK, well, fine. You pay, garbage collector. OK, you give me a megawatt. Good. Oh, but I'm still busy. Ah, can't grow again. Uh, well, give me more space. No, you, you must GC first. Well, okay, fine. You pay one megawatt. It, it makes you work. You no, know, the, the poor GC. You GC all the time. You spend your time doing GC for nothing. Moreover, because these segments are really small, you can get into a situation where each segment is basically half full. So half of your memory is available, but you cannot allocate something that is more than half that segment. So you can have, you know, you try to buy a right new 500,000, and it tells you no, I can't do that. And you know, object memory, how much memory I have free? 500 megabytes. What do you mean I, you can't you can do 500k without 500 megabytes? Well, that's no longer a problem. And this one, this one is terrible. The memory policy, when it frees memory, because of garbage collected, it says, well, I'm going to be nice and I'm going to give all this memory back to the operating system because I have too much free memory. So together with the tiny increment, this is what could happen to you. So we're back here, right? Oh, I need to grow. Oh, OK, bang. So move a little bit. Great, awesome. Oh, look, I just made a little bit of garbage. Oh, OK, let's garbage collect more. OK, fine. Oh, look, too much free memory. Let's get rid of it. Great. Oh, no, but I'm still working. Ah, I need more space. I don't have it. OK, we'll pay again. OK, give me a megabyte. Awesome. Great, I can continue. Oh, I need more garbage. Oh, OK. Go back. Garbage collect. Great. Oh, look, so much free memory. OK, look here. You, you spend all your money doing garbage collect. It kills your performance. Not anymore. So now, the, the thing is, the memory policy, as you can imagine, has a lot of you know knobs and little figures that say, well, you grow by this much, and you put all this padding, and you still save memory for this, that, and the other. It's complicated. It is complicated. There are a lot of interdependencies because to manage this model requires, I mean, to manage this sophisticated model requires sophisticated uh, relationships between all these figures. And just a, a little bit off that you are, VM failure because you couldn't maintain the environment that you always had to scan. So for that, we have new technology. I mean, we have tests. And, uh, and so we have tests and we ship. So anybody, you, applications, you can play with this as well. So first we have a, a self-test that is a memory policy checker. It will make sure that all the 26 instance variables of a memory policy these days make sense. And that they don't contradict each other. Like for instance, that they don't say, you know, the maximum free memory is less than the amount you, have, you can grow, for example, because it doesn't make any sense. And uh, for instance, you will not try to release so much memory that you immediately run into a memory emergency, for example. And you can also, just by making a subclass and writing one method, you can plug in your own memory policy, and it will run the test for you. And then you know your application's memory policy makes sense and it's good for you. Moreover, we also have a set of assumed tests that will make suggestions. Just let your image warm up. You load all your code, and then you run the test and it will tell you, you know, you have too many objects like this, like that, it would be better if you tuned it this way or that way. So this can be good for performance uh, measurements. And moreover, for those of us that really want to make sure things actually work, not just appear to work, 
like 99% of the time, no, but it actually work, and not just on my machine, we have a stress test. And this set of machine tests will, will try really, really, really hard to make your image crash. And to give you an idea, in, in, before we started this work, the image could not survive 30 seconds. 30 seconds, VM failure, you're done. So, uh, of course, that's not the only case. But what, how do you tune the thing? How do you change the 26 parameters? Well, because we have now an improved version of John Brandt and Don Roberts' memory monitor. This was uh, theirs back then, but we've uh, contributed to it and made it much better. Moreover, you can see several things here. You can see how, how your spaces are being used, how many scavenges there have been. So when there are scavenges, you can think, hey, I'm creating a little garbage collection. Your use memory, how many garbage, collector, uh, garbage collections have there been? How many times you also have scanned perm space? Because you really thought that there was garbage in perm space. What the IGC is doing, and what the IGC has done. Moreover, how many times did the native stack uh, space spilled, meaning you have too many processes running and so you're throwing out context into um, the object memory, which is bad for, for, for performance. How many times the IGC mark stack overflow, remember that the, mark, that the IGC puts the mark stack into object memory, so if you don't have enough space, you're running the IGC for nothing. How many times the GC's mark stack overflow. Now, remember the GC is immune to mark stack overflow, it will continue anyway, but it causes time, how many times are there list overflows, how many times the native code cache was not big enough, and how many times you just threw out IGC work for nothing. This information is very useful because it will tell you what do you need to touch in order to make performance better. Moreover, in order to really know what's going on, you can just layer application get hot and then you know run the IGC on purpose, or run the garbage collector on purpose, or run the global garbage collector on purpose, or flash new space on purpose. This is really nice to fabricate old objects on demand. <coughs> you can also run the multi-allocation profiler. This is a profiler that will uh, check for all allocations in all processes that are running. So you know where garbage is being created. Well, writing this tool, I found a way to slash the amount of garbage by a factor of three that this tool requires itself just by running the quality allocation profiler with a button. And moreover, with this button here, you start creating a CSV file of all this data over and over and over again. So now you can load it in Excel, and you can do whatever you want. You can graph it, you can look for patterns, and moreover, you can load this tool, you can load this tool in your application, headless, with a parcel that we ship. So you load it up in your application and you let it run. And now you have a CSV log of what your application is doing. So this is really nice, really nice information to have because it will tell you what to do. So before and after, what, what happened after all this work? Because all oh, this sounds exciting, but you know, did the change mean anything? Well, first off, we can see a difference in the picture, right? So first we started with these little teeny tiny one megabyte things, not anymore. The growth regime, uh, the limit past which you're gonna GC in order to get more memory has been increased because most applications are bigger than 32 megabytes these days. Basically the image is bigger than that. And moreover, it's never the case anymore that your VM will crash for no reason when there is no memory emergency. Never again. That's it. It will never appear to work again. It will actually work, which is good. Here are some numbers. This is a good one. So we have a number of tests here. These, are, these, these columns are the tests. And we have three numbers per test. Now, first off, you'll notice that there's only three red bars. That's because that is uh, a version that did not have all the fixes in. So some tests just didn't finish. It just blow up. Or take a really, really, really long time to work. I estimate that if they actually work, they would take about a day to run the stress tests. Next we have the yellow bars that have some fixes to um, 
the memory policy works, so your VM doesn't crash anymore because it's actually working correctly. And you can see that although there are some increases in some cases, there, there are some big gains here, but moreover, now we have results for every test. So now we can't crash the VM anymore. And the next one is what we shift as a default in 771 that has significant performance improvements. And we think because of this mix of results that if your stress test went from it will take about a day if they finish to it takes 160 minutes with some of the fixes or it takes 73 minutes to run, we think this is really good. And this should be reflected in applications, but I hear you. You're going to say, you just wrote your test because you know what you fix, so you're just writing a test for your fix. Well, but I like, I like to differ, and this is great. This here is a frame of a video from ESA 2009. And this is a demo of an application called print to web And you'll see here, that's where the mouse cursor is, and it's the garbage cursor. And if you play the video, you're going to see that this cursor is flickering like crazy. Garbage line, garbage line, garbage line. And what was happening was this thing that I just told you, right? Oh, I need more memory. Pay. I need more memory. Pay. Oh, too much free memory. Go away. Go away. Oh, I need more memory. Pay. Pay. It killed performance, the poor thing. Just with two changes, two, two figures, and that's it. Two and a half times faster. And no more GC anymore. And that's just changing two little knobs. So this is really good. <laughs> so, back, I, I gave this talk in, 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 at Small Talks in 2010. And back then I had a slide of things we were going to do. So this were, was the, the, the slide, basically. That we were going to fix uh, a bunch of stuff in fixed space, because there were situations in which you could get uh, things out of the line, so there is specific space where you cannot allocate it anyway. Where are all the partners that report to the bug? <laughs> Not anymore. We also have improved look and kernel support, IGC performance improvements. The GCI and IGC don't, don't suffer from mark stack, mark stack overflow anymore, so they run faster, or the IGC doesn't even abort. We were going to investigate whether when you do a GC, moving some types of bodies in back into uh, large space was a good idea or not. And we were going to have VM uh, command line switches. So you could override the configuration of the image without having to load the image, do something, and save it. So now, like for instance, you can have a script and you run your, your application with whatever configuration you want from a script and measure. Well, what happened? It's done. No more. Well, what will 7.9 have? Okay. Well, first off, we did a little bit of code audit. Uh, and, and this code audit for the garbage collect is a um, stepping stone into much deeper changes that we're going to be making to the memory manager in VisualWorks in the next coming releases, particularly for the next major release. And we found a way to, in the common case, have a faster GC, how much faster? in not ridiculous images that you can make up, I have measured it to be up to 40% faster in the common case. So if you have an image with burn space and you do a normal GC, it can be way, way faster than before. Of course, it depends on the size and the shape of your object graph. So it's, it's hard to predict in advance how you get exactly you know, 23.7%, but it is faster. Moreover, we will have an, an improved IGC that uses less memory, that manages it, its weak objects this much better, because before we could fabricate cases in which the IGC would start using more memory than there were objects. And that doesn't happen anymore. And as a result, your application goes faster. We also have, we will also have, in the memory policy, how do you run the IGC in interruptible mode? Because the IGC runs in little, in little bits. So it's nice if the little slices of work don't take too much time, because if you have a, a, a GUI application and the IGC interrupts you for too long, then your application becomes sluggish. So now we have a driver in the memory policy that will measure the time and self-adjust. So it doesn't matter if your computer is slow, fast, 
you have to run a lot of programs, you didn't, you load a whole bunch of programs and the machine will start and then it became easy, it will self-adjust. So you no longer have to play the guesswork of what exact number do I have to put in here so my application behaves correctly. Moreover, there are cases in which the image, because it's looking at all the data, can figure out, you know, this IGC that I'm running, it's never going to finish. Because the, what the application is doing is preventing me from finishing. So it's useless. It's useless. And because of that, now the memory policy will be able to detect this situation and just abort itself and say, now, you know what, let's give up for now and leave, let the application run fast until it stabilizes itself. But for applications that know what's going to happen with memory management, the memory policy now has a switch. You can turn the AGC off with one message. You just say, you know, object memory, current memory policy, allow, allow ink GC, false. No more AGC. So if you know what you're doing, and you know, for example, that you know, I'm just going to bring a ton of objects, and I know most of them are not garbage, I don't want to run the AGC right now. So now you can do that very easily, and thus improve your application performance much more. So in addition to that, we will have a rewritten old remember table, rewritten become, and basically rewritten fixed space allocation. Tons of fixes and faster performance. So that will be in 7.9. Well, actually, that is in 7.9, because it's done as well. So for those that can get uh, to the latest field, you can start playing with this today. So uh, this is the uh, end of the presentation. So I wonder if you have any questions. Yes. Oh, but you need a mic. I mean, well, I get water that doesn't have any gas in it. By the way, I don't know how I'm running the time. Uh, I, I figured that it was eight okay. Minutes. Hmm? Eight minutes. Eight minutes left? Eh? Awesome. Hello, can you say something about uh, handling large amounts of memory? In what regard? Uh, what one three can expect if you have um, more than uh, a few hundred megabytes or uh, gigabytes of uh, RAM? Well, what I can tell you is that the stress test that I mentioned routinely make the image grow up to the memory limit, which right now is set by default to 512 megawatts. You, it, they, if you set the image with more, uh, with a higher memory limit, higher memory limit, then they will use even more memory. And in those configurations, we went from an estimated runtime of a day to 73 minutes. So we, think, we do think it makes a, a huge difference, particularly the fact that each time you grow, you don't grow like, like this, like a really poor little apple, pay, 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 like poor, poor, you know, poor situation, but rather you grow a chunk. And then you don't bother anymore until, until it's worth doing a GC and trying to get more gar uh, garbage before growing again. So, um, moreover, that application that I showed, the print to web, if I remember right, they were using about 250, 300 megabyte image, two and a half times faster. So we think it, it does make a big difference. But uh, I would really like it if you, if you run the memory monitor log and you give me a CSV log, I'd really be happy to look at it. Um, how, how is this work related to maybe future multi-threaded VMs? <sighs> it's, it's a thorny problem, isn't it? Um, right now, this work has basically two motivators. One is that uh, it's not acceptable for customers to have the type of issues that I described and that they no longer have. The second one is that in order to do some of the complicated stuff that you mentioned, there are stepping stones that are just as valuable and we need, for example, a memory manager that doesn't still think that it's okay to allocate pointer objects in large space, which is not possible. Or that, for example, a memory manager that has a become that will work in every case, not just a few cases, every case. Or a memory manager that will actually shrink the old remember table, as opposed to try and fail immediately. And this is really good because um, 
And not only it is better, but and it, and it has allowed us to get better performances you know, uh, with, with the GC, but also because, because it's more stable and more predictable now, we can move on to, for example, enable, enabling perm spacing 64 bits. And then, once we have that working correctly, and once we get rid of not just the, the, the issue that the implementation was not complete before, or for, for whatever reason, for, uh, please don't take it like I'm pointing the finger to anyone and just stay in front. Right? Please, please, no, no offense or any such. Um, it's not just that. The, the, the game currently is making some assumptions, some assumptions that are not that, that appear to work. To, to make the story short, and we would like the VM to work. Period. And once we get um, perm space stabilized, then we can start thinking about perm space 64 bits and then share perm space but on a strong, solid foundation. And uh, once we get those features, then perhaps we can start thinking, you know, now that we know what the GC is doing, and now that it's all stabilized and better and faster, then we, perhaps we can think about, well, how about we run the multi-thread in, say, separate memory spaces. But I'm not making any promises because we don't have a, a planning stone for that. But yes, it would be very nice. <laughs> yes. So, uh, maybe an extension of the previous question. Uh, mm -hmm. What about, say, 10 gigabyte uh, big image in MP6? Like, this is one of the questions. Uh, yes. Uh, another question is uh, what about the availability of 7.8 in production? So, uh, so experience shows better results. Uh, so, reliability is still the same. Very, very good. Or even better. Uh, what are the experience on the field? Uh, I have not met, I have not seen a, a 10 gigabyte 64 bit image. So it's, it's really hard to, to, uh, to speculate. But you can have a chance to, to go on uh, this area. So very big images. Uh, however, um, it's, uh, it's hard to engineer out of guesses because you're likely to guess wrong. And that's, a, that's a problem. That's, that's for example why the, the VM doesn't try to guess what the application is doing and start managing memory for the application. It just delegates to the image. So I would really like to see CSV logs of what happens on a 10 gigabyte image. Maybe, for example, we could, just as a, just as a thought, multi-thread the IGC so you don't even have to call the stop the world GC anymore. Most of the time. That would be an interesting the uh, other applications are such as images for uh, web servers, I think, with web application servers can be such. Because you can have one image with a lot of memory, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, then a garbage collection is a very important thing. So, you don't right. have to lose time there. Well, um, I think that you will find that the time driven IGC driver, now in, in, in 79 builds, will be useful to you. If you, for example, if what would happen, for example, if you want a memory policy that doesn't stop the world when it runs a GC, then you could configure it such that you will only use the IGC, the incremental garbage collector, with a time set of, say, say 20 milliseconds max. It will self-adjust, so you don't have to, you know, tune the machine, it will react to things that happen. That will keep your latency down to whatever value you, you like. And then you can just tell the, mem the memory policy only use the garbage collector, the stop the world garbage collector in an actual emergency. And other than that, you can manage it with the IGC. The nice thing um, about this is that now you have tests and stress tests that you can, you can make any memory policy you want. You run the test, they are green, or they will actually tell you, you know, because every asset has a description as to why that is there. And then you can run the memory stress test. And if you can crash your VM, chances are you're good to go. So you actually have the Yes. Uh, how is it with uh, DLLCC and the multi-threaded DLLCC? I'm sorry, what? Uh, DLLCC now? Uh, how does it uh, garbage work with uh, DLLCC and, and uh, how does it work with multi-threaded DLLCC?